Raw Advantage. Check out the link to see it. Chris Kendall, another vegan crusader. We call him the Banana Commander. Some good recipes. Good guy, Chris. Check out his site. Anyway, so I wanted to say 80-10-10 diet, man. It's fucked me up. It's, I've, you know, the danger of 80-10-10, the 80-10-10 diet warning. I'm, you know, I just want to be honest with people, man. I'm, I'm fucked this week because of, because of this fruit lifestyle, man. This high carb, low fat, vegan thing, the low fat, raw vegan thing. I'm fucked up because of that. I'm just going to be honest with people that it's, uh, it's not all, it's not all fucking, uh, banana smoothies with sugar cane juice, you know? It's not always this stuff, man. I've developed an injury. The problem with this lifestyle, right, we start slamming the sugar, you slam in the water, you staying consistently hydrated, you get in the early nights, you're going to bed at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, you're doing that for months around. All of a sudden, you want to fucking do crazy shit. And it's easy to overtrain. So what I've been doing is I'm back in Australia and I've been training with a boxing club here and I'm some sparring some really experienced guys and last Thursday night I was in a in the ring with a pro boxer and we're just, you know, five rounds just going at it. And this guy's pro fucking boxer, you know what I mean? And so I've got the cardio, I've got the fucking fitness and I've got the you know, the, the fucking fruit vitality, the early nights, just fucking let's go, let's go, you know. And I've stepped into water that's deeper than I can handle. And so I've got some good, some good shots in my chest here, and uh, I'm just training after that, and I've torn one of my little intercostal muscles. So I'm, ah, fuck, that even hurts just doing that. It hurts a lot. It hurts during sex. It hurts riding my bike. It hurts during running. So what I've been doing all week is I've changed my program around. I last Sunday I did my last bike ride. And I haven't cycled since then, except for like, you know, a kilometre down to the corner shop or to post something off. So no training technically and no running. So I haven't ran for the last five days, but I did run today because I had to, every Saturday I have a running race, a 5k race, and I've won it the last five weeks in a row. Oh, it hurts to breathe. And today I won it again. And what I did though is I didn't go out really fast. I just... I just uh, sat behind the fastest runner there and then out sprinted him <laughs> for the last bit so I didn't have to do you know, anything too extreme on my, uh, on my chest here. So that was, that was it. It's about training smarter versus training harder. You want to avoid getting into the rut of overtraining, which I see a lot of people out there doing. They, they start reversing their health issues. Like recently we have a, a guy, a cool guy, I don't know if I'm giving, I'll give him shit on the internet, but it's nothing personal, but... Uh, a guy out there is going, oh, you know, 80, 10, 10, fucked me up. I went from not being able to run two miles ever to fucking, you know, running ultra marathons in a few months. And I told him about that. I said, that's really cool, man, but, like, you're going to fuck up big time because you're overtraining. I don't give a fuck how well you're eating or sleeping or drinking. Overtraining is fucking overtraining. And when you fuck up overtraining, you're going to fuck up your whole endocrine system. And then when you blame it on fucking the absence of Outback Steakhouse burgers or whatever... That's fucking insanity. It's like getting a Porsche and go, wow, the Porsche just handles so much better. Now on the Autobahn, you wipe out and you go, oh, the Porsches are really dangerous. No, you are fucking dangerous in your behavior. You can't overtrain. I've overtrained. Even me, the fucking train smarter versus harder guy, I can still get into that rut. And I did it on the boxing and it hurt so fucking much. Oh, man, intercostal muscle. I'm going to be out for a few months probably. Some of my boxing mates going, yeah, you out for a few months, and that's cool, you know. That, that, here's the funny thing: is is Drew Rider going to get fat on his all-you-can-eat program? No fucking way. Why? Because you can't get fat on this lifestyle ever. Watch the videos of the next few months and see how fat Drew Rider gets. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. But what's going to happen is that my fitness is going to go down. My body composition might change a little bit. I might have a little bit more water retention on me. Could I might be a little bit better hydrated, possibly. Blah blah blah. There's no way I'm going to get fat. And there's no way I'm going to restrict my calories because I fucking hate starving. I can't starve myself. I can't do that. That's fucking boring, man. I like feasting, man. <laughs> Guzzling the carbohydrates until you're just like, oh, done. Guzzle, 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 guzzle. Definitely, always, man. Binge on carbs every day. That is just like liquid fucking sugar 
guilt-free. Nutrition. Phytonutrients to the max. Oh, this is so sore. People out there are probably laughing and going, sucked in during order, you got some pain now. There's some pain anyway. So these are the shoes I raced in this morning. Some old Nikes I've had laying around. They've got holes in them. See that? I still got the Brooks Green Science, and I rate the Brooks Green Science better than the, the, these Nikes because these are just flimsy crap, really. But these are just some old shoes I had laying around, so I thought I might as well use them. But I'm saving the Brooks Green Science for the, uh, for the longer races and stuff like that. So uh, just cheap stuff, you know. But it's a rule that, you know, you don't need the, the latest and greatest. And as long as it's safe and it works, you can still use it. Don't throw it away. Use it until you can't use it. And use the old Garmin. Again, the Garmin, the band snapped off the Garmin. So I retrofitted it with a uh, another Garmin band. It doesn't fit perfectly, but it works, and it's safe, so I'm going to use it. That's my little message to people out there. It's easy to fucking overtrain on this lifestyle. You're going to feel so good. You're going to be like just going, yeah, ah! You're going to become almost grandiose, manic, fucking whatever. So you just got to keep it in check and train smarter versus harder, yeah? I should take my own fucking advice on this one. I shouldn't be in the ring, trying to keep up with someone who's got 20 years boxing experience. It's you know, asking for trouble, asking for trouble. So that's my lesson, that's my moral of the story. You'll see a lot of people out there who will be fucking up, they'll be feeling so good on the fruit, getting their early nights, and then they just like, just overtrain, get into a hole and go, oh, it must be the diet, it must be the absence of Outback Steakhouse burgers or chicken periods or whatever. It's not, it's the absence of training smarter versus harder. And that's my message today. Post your comments and questions down below. What have been your experiences with overtraining? What have you learned from your injuries? Or what have you seen on other people's experiences? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next video. Peace.